Hello everybody and welcome back to Chrono Trigger and this is part 8. So in the uh, last episode there we... We made it to the uh, end of time area and now we have learned to use magic now. Um, not really sure how that's capable but I'm uh, sure why not. So anyways, uh, so we're, we're supposed to use the one that goes to the 1000 AD one and it actually brings us to a different time gate that's on the other side of the map in 1000 AD and um, we'll be going through a cave system to get back to the original content that um, content continent that we were on. Back to the Truce Village area. And so this area here, this is kind of like an outcast area of the mystics. Um, kind of what's left over from the war from the 600 AD. And they have a like little philosophy of they hate humans. They're, they're just really a different you know, species there. But anyway, so we see uh, Melkor here again, and uh, this is actually where he lives there. And I'm actually speeding this up right here. Just doing the normal shopping here. Um, just pretty much getting what he has, which is better uh, than what we have equipped uh, right now. And so just just uh, equipping the new stuff and selling the old, and it's just this kind of uh, convoluted uh, way I have to do it here. And I believe as soon as I sell out the, the bow here, that should be it. Yep. So, other than that, uh, um, he tells you that there is a shortcut through the mountain cave to the north. And that, sh that right there should tell us that now we can go up here. I, I don't think you can go in there until the um, until Melikor tells you to go up here. And so, uh, basically what's going on is that the, the mystics... Um, some remnants are actually still um, aggressive towards humans and actually if you go to the little town that we came out of over there to the uh, that was on the right over there um, there is a shop and the um, shop owner that sells weapons there um, which I think they're like um, better like we'll find them like way later um, they're like super expensive, like a hundred thousand, like uh, like money or something like that. And um, it you you just at this point in the game there, you don't have enough unless you like really really grinded. But um, but anyways, uh, so we're, we're getting into some of these new new enemies here. We saw the uh, the two guys before there. Actually, I shouldn't have showed that up because we fought those guys before. No, I realize it because we fought those those type of uh, two, um, uh, the what are they, the blue and the the yellow skinned um, enemies there that we fought at the beginning of the cave here. We fought those uh, in the cathedral in uh, 600 AD. Um, but uh, these octopus guys here, we have not not fight these guys yet, so I'm leaving these in. Um, and the little eye icon with the X there, that means that uh, that's a blind effect, I believe. And it, um, it actually does do something in this game. It actually affects your um, attack percentage uh, rate. Um, it brings it down some. It doesn't completely like make it you know, null and void. And... Um, So it, it's it's best to heal it. Uh, you know the, the the heal items there they're they're inexpensive really. I'm sure you probably have some on hand that you can heal it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. Uh, these guys are not really that hard. They're um, mo most of the most of these guys in this uh, this cave area they're they're actually really susceptible to uh, the magic uh, that you newly acquired uh, acquired there so it's kind of a, a means to get you to use your magic 
and kind of get used to, you know, um, getting a feel of what they do and all that. Because um, normal attacks do okay, but the magic attacks, um, you'll see later, like these guys right here that we're going to fight, like these centipede looking dudes, um, or whatever, um, uh, they're really susceptible to, to uh, magic attacks. Um, I believe probably, especially to fire, I guess, because I did Luca's uh, fire attack on one of them, and it did like, I think it was 120 damage and it, it did pretty good so um yeah so here i'm thinking well maybe i'll just do a fire whirl and then I, I think it does pretty good uh sort of not too bad and uh you'll see you'll see well, I, at first i thought oh maybe it's just because the magic doesn't work but um uh Chrono's uh, slash attack does decent damage. It doesn't do good like her fire, uh, like magic attacks might would, you know, would do. But, um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, I think they're pretty pretty much suitable to to the fire. Uh, actually, this the battle that I cut out, uh, I do use that uh, use that ability, and I figure that out. Um, now I, I think I, I don't think I, I, I noticed it uh, during the first fight there in the, the beginning of this cave here. Um, since we got new magic, we actually got some new dual attack um, thing there. Um, uh, Marl and Luca got the the ice and fire uh, duel called um, I think it's called Antipode. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't remember how you you pronounce it, but it, it's a it's actually a pretty good. Um, um, combo attack there because uh, it actually does really good damage. And since uh, this this place uh, has, yeah, see you'll see it right here actually, and it does a group of, of things there. It does an area that it, it's in there. It's kind of like Chrono's um, uh, uh, cyclone ability, where it does an area. And as you saw there, it did really good. Like it did like a, you know almost two and a half damage. So, so yep, magic is pretty good here, and um, so, um, so I, I avoid uh, this guy there. That that black box there. That uh, we'll be able to open those. Uh, I think probably halfway through the game there. There's uh, an item that we get that uh, opens that up later. Um, so you're gonna see this uh, cut right here. Um, that cut is me actually failing the first battle against this boss right here. Um, when I went, when I first fought this boss right here, I actually was going doing pretty good, but then I actually started really declining fast, and I actually failed. And so I had to. Um, thankfully, I saved at that uh, save point that's right there. I was just right before this room. And so I, I just start from that there. So the thing is, is that this guy is susceptible to magic. Um, just really any magic. Uh, there's no, no real like uh, strategy per se in, in terms of you know using your magic. Um, predominantly, I, like I like you do right here, I would do antipode when you can. But what I would do though is um, just have Luca do her fire spell and then have Marl and Chrono do the aura whirl so then that way you don't get shit like that where Chrono dies. And uh, so... So basically what I do is like I, like, like I said uh, I'm actually going to do a thing to where I have Chrono, be, Chrono and Marl be the healing team and um, Luca be the attack team. Um, sort of. <laughs> so I'll be utilizing uh, the Aura Whirl. And I would suggest keeping everybody above like a hundred. Just to... Just to make sure that, you know, they survive. And, um, basically I guess this kind of, I guess every round just do the Aura Whirl. And then just have Luke, Luca just attack there, and eventually you'll you'll 
You'll actually succeed there. I, I, if you're fully healed and you're actually in good standing, you can do, you can do what I do right here, whereas I, I take a turn to have um, Luca and Meryl do the Anapode attack. And um, eventually, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, when he does that little um, curl ball um, stance. Uh, don't attack him because he'll do a counter attack with that water ability there and it actually hurts quite a bit And uh, he, he tells you to you know, oh go ahead and attack me, but uh, I Wouldn't do it because then he does uh, the water attack there and it actually really hurts so So I, from what I'm seeing here, it looks like he's actually a water um a water uh, user, so he, he's kind of susceptible to maybe like lightning and maybe ice. I don't know. So yeah, let's try to have uh, quite a few uh, revives on hand. I would probably have like about maybe ten of them, so that way you're covered real well. And if you can, you just wait for Marl and Chrono to get their turns there and do Aura Whirl, which will actually keep you up afloat there, because it does does do um, you know amount of healing to where it would heal more than what he attacks you with. I mean, maybe for some, but um, other than that, just kind of spam it when you're in trouble, and then um, you should be good. So really, like I said, it's just a cycle of doing spamming our world and have Luca do her fire, and then when you can do Anapode, and then go back to spamming our world again. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so like I said, this is uh, this is the second time I, I go against this guy, and I, I kind of go with a different. Different plan there. I was originally going to show me uh, cutting to when I failed and then loading my stay, but I was like, nah, I'll just, I'll just load up. Uh, I'll just kind of cut past all that. Just to, just to save on, on the time there, that this video is probably a little shorter than usual because I'm, I'm using up the rest of my footage that I have here. So right now, um, this episode here is using up my footage there, and I'll have to record again. And I will have to record for Mario RPG as well because I used up the rest of that as well. So uh, I'm, I'm going to have to get into a recording mode here pretty soon. So the first first one that I'll probably be recording first will be Mario RPG because this, this one here is covering for its slot. And then um, right now, I don't have anything for Mario RPG as of this recording, but I will be getting recording soon. And you see that little stance that they did? And if you, if you, uh, he'll he'll do it like this counterattack. Now, I I'm not sure if it is while he's in that that stance. It's at, he says something about like, go ahead and attack me, and it's like. I think when he says that, don't attack him, because then he'll do his little. It will say like counter attack, and it will do that little. Um, I believe I believe the effect is like water two or something like that. Um, which um, if you bring frog, uh, he gets uh the water. Um, magic um ability. Um, which we'll, we will be getting to a little bit later. Um, what we'll be having to do is kind of do a full circle where we need to get to the the uh, the millennia f uh, millennia uh, fair and go through that time gate, and that will open up uh, that light for that um, era um, at the end of time, and it will also open up the 600 AD. It, basically what it does is the the when you go through a gate uh, and you uh, go back to the end of time it actually opens their portals of light at the end of time and that's where it is actually you don't have to like travel around just to get to um, 
you know, where you have to go all the way to the Millennium Fair just to go to 600 AD. And um, it's just a, a quick access hub to where it just opens that up for you. And it's just, a, I guess you can call it a quick travel, I suppose, but I don't know. Well, you'll see here that I pop up near uh, Lucas' house, which is that single house right there. Um, actually, if you visit that house there, um, Lucas' dad will actually make stuff for Luca, uh, for Luca dad to wear, um, and all that, so, so, yep, so, this right here, I'm not quite done just yet there, I, I, I thought I was, uh, when I was editing this, I thought that was the end there, but actually, no, um, right here, this is just me going to the portal at, uh, Lucas's device thing there, that was at the beginning of the game. And that's all you do is you just go through it and you just end up at the end of time. And you'll see another pillar of light that you can go through to go to 600 AD. And that's where we'll be going in the next video there. So that will be it for this recording session and that's pretty much it. So anyways, that's the end of this video here. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And also follow me on Twitter and I will catch you guys in the next video there. So peace.